Tell us um, your argument that the Internet, essentially, uh, our capacity to go online, really should be treated like uh, a utility, basically like electricity was uh, 100 years ago. Well, thanks for the question. Um, Yes, people may not know this, but electricity was considered to be a luxury 100 years ago, and 90% of farmers didn't have it, and it was controlled by... uh, large trusts that had combined to control more than 85% of the electricity distribution market. Today, you can't start a new business or get a job or get a good education or get access to the most modern healthcare resources without having a wired connection to the Internet. And 83% of people who have smartphones also have wired connections. Uh, What's happened is that... um, For 19 million Americans, they can't get wired access at any cost because it just isn't available where they are. A third of Americans don't subscribe to a wired home connection, many because of cost, some because they just don't understand its relevance. And compared to other countries, prices are quite high in the United States and capacity is pretty low. Um, This has all happened because over the last 10 years or so, we've completely deregulated this sector, leading to both no competition in the market for wired Internet access, and, by the way, also pretty uh, low levels of competition for wireless access. Verizon and and AT&T really dominate that field. So no real competition and no oversight, which is uh, a terrible combination for something that Americans need, just like clean water and electricity. From a historical standpoint, I mean, just tell us what did happen with electricity, because you have this situation where um, it's obviously, in some respects, it's just simply not uh, worth it for a private entity to provide universal access. You know, those last uh, couple of miles, or in some cases, you know, back then, tens of miles were just simply not worth laying down the, uh, the, the copper, as it were, or the wire, um, to deliver electricity. Just give us a notion of exactly what the U.S. government did at that time. Well, this problem operates on a few levels. So for very far-flung rural areas, the federal government back in the 20s and 30s encouraged the development of rural cooperatives that would help uh, municipalities and communities help themselves to provide electricity where the incumbents found it uneconomic to serve those areas. So for electricity in rural areas, we encourage rural cooperatives. And then in urban areas, made sure that uh, wholesale prices were regulated and that a standard for electricity was provided uh, for everybody so that we could operate all the machines and devices we want to. So fast forward, got a very similar situation now for very high-speed Internet access. Um, In most parts of the country, your only choice for a world-class wired internet connection is your local cable monopoly. And that company isn't subject to very much oversight, if any. And for other parts of the country, they're just unserved, particularly rural areas. Um, So we've got a similar problem, an absence of competition in areas where competition is possible, and then an absence of service in areas where the companies feel it's uneconomical to go there. This is leading to a very large policy problem for the United States because everything we want to do, from client, climate change to uh, you know, improving health care to improving educational resources around the country, depends on having a reliable, first-rate, uh, wired Internet network around the country. 